So you have a bunch of photos that you think would do well if you sold them as stock photography, but maybe you're not sure how to edit them. Some people might just throw on their favorite preset that they got from a YouTuber. Some people might just submit them as they are, but I wanted to show you some best practices on how to edit them in a way that will be appealing for the buyers and will ultimately, hopefully, get you some more sales. So in the last few videos that I've been posting, I've been making a series all about stock photography. So if you haven't seen them, I'll link the whole playlist up here if you wanna go check that out. I've gone over things like best practices for stock photography as a whole and sorting out your photos in Adobe Bridge to find and organize all of your photos so that you can easily find and collect all of the photos that you want to be selling. And then next week I'll be going over uploading all of your photos in a way that should be a little bit quicker and uh, save you a lot more time than individually uploading to each and every stock photography website because we all know that there is quite a lot these days. So today I wanted to go over editing these photos. I'm gonna be using Adobe Lightroom Classic. Feel free to use Adobe Lightroom CC or any other editing software. And then I also might be opening up Photoshop here and there, but uh, just sparingly at this point. So considering the videos that I've already made about stock photography, I'm going into this video assuming that you have already organized all of your photos uh, that you're gonna be selling into one single folder. Uh, it won't matter too much if you haven't, but it'll just make the importing into Lightroom a lot easier and quicker. Other than that, this video should be easily followable for anyone else who hasn't seen the other videos. So let's go right into Lightroom. All right, so here I have Lightroom Classic open, nothing imported yet, so we'll go ahead and import down at the bottom left. I have my photography hard drive that I put my stock folder into in the last video, and we can see here that I have that folder named stock with all of the photos that I'm considering to sell. But clearly, as we look through them all, they all could use a little bit of editing, so I'm gonna go ahead and import them all down at the bottom right. So now that they're all imported, we can see that each one needs something different individually. There's not one copy and paste edit that I can do for each one. So this may take a little bit of time. There may be a little bit that I can copy and paste here and there, like uh, adding a certain kind of tone curve to each one. But for the most part, each one is gonna be individually edited. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with this guy here. So we can see that the sky is blown out. There's a bunch of logos here on the tops of all these buildings. But otherwise, I think it's a fairly good shot. So first thing I'm gonna try and do is correct this big bright sky. I'm gonna lower the highlights, probably lower the overall exposure, and then compensate that by brightening up the dark areas and push the whites up a little bit. This already feels a lot better. We can see that there's a little bit more detail in the sky. We can even try and dehaze it a little bit to clean it up even more. I'll try and fix the white balance a little bit better. Just doing this by eye, but I could use an eyedropper tool. So this already looks a little bit better. So next up, I'm gonna try and fix some of the issues that I see with this photo. Starting off, I have some weird, I don't know if these are clouds or like spots on my lens, but I'm gonna use the healing brush and I'm just gonna paint over this like that. And I saw another one like that over here. Much better. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and try and start removing these logos. I may be able to get these done within Lightroom, but I'm thinking I'll probably end up having to do this in Photoshop instead. That one's not bad. So this Novotel logo doesn't seem to want to go away easily with the healing brush on Lightroom. 
So I'm going to go ahead and right click edit in Adobe Photoshop. And this will help me be able to get just a little bit better of an edit to get this logo gone. So first thing I'm going to do is unclick this lock box here, press Z and select the area that I want to work in. Maybe zoom in a little bit more. I'm going to press S and that's going to give the clone stamp tool and I'm going to hold Alt or Option to select where I want to sample from. And then I just go ahead and paint. Now this part can get a little tricky. You can see here that my lines aren't straightening up very well, but sometimes you might be able to get away with it considering how small of the photo that part takes up. But another way we could try to make this work is using content aware fill. If I select this area and I hold shift delete, this window pops up and we can click on content aware and click okay. It's gonna think for a bit and it doesn't do a bad job. I think I can do a little bit better. We also might be able to select a little bit closer to the logo by drawing it on and that might give us a little bit better of a sample. So same thing, hold shift and delete and click OK. And then from here, I guess we can just go ahead and clone stamp to fix the rest of the issues that we have here. Again, it won't be exactly perfect, but not terrible, I would say. So there we have it. That logo is all gone. Not looking the greatest here, but that might also be able to be fixed up later on. Maybe another time I'll go through a little bit more in detail on how to actually Photoshop things out, but this is just a very quick patch job. I think for now this is a pretty good base. Uh, if we wanted to, we could also probably use the healing brush to get rid of these security cameras. Nice and easy like that. So basically when you're editing your stock photos in Photoshop, you'll have three main tools that will be your best friend. First off is the clone stamp tool, which has the shortcut of S. Next up will be the spot healing brush, which is a little bit more of an automated version of the clone stamp tool. And then your third one is the content aware fill, which is done by simply selecting an object with the lasso tool or the marquee tool, holding shift and delete and clicking OK on content aware. And just like that, that did a not too bad job. From, from afar at least. This is roughly where I would like the photo to end up. Uh, clearly there's a little bit more things that I need to do to fix up later on after this video is over, but I think I'm at a good spot here. Once you're done editing these things in Photoshop, you can go Command S uh, or Control S. It'll save the edit and then it'll bring it right back into Photoshop. You can see here at the bottom, I have one of two and two of two. So two of two is the original, one of two is the edit without all the logos and stuff. And that's pretty much it. Next up, I can move on to another photo. So here I have, it's a pretty tall image. Uh, so I'm gonna unlock this and try and reframe it a little bit better. So this is the Library of Parliament, which is behind the Parliament buildings on Parliament Hill in Ottawa, Canada. So to start off, I wanna actually make the building a little bit more obviously seen. So I'm gonna try and reverse the contrast here. And fix the white balance a bit. So now just like that, by playing around with just the basic tab and a tiny little bit on the tone curve, this is already the difference that I can see. 
Here, I'm trying to make the building pop a little bit more than hiding in the shadows like it was before, while also making sure that the, the moon stays nice and bright and in focus. Realistically, I could probably also make the image a little bit darker and actually go up even more with the shadows because I do want to make it look a little bit more like a night scene since the moon is up. I'll also make sure that my profile corrections are on so that there's not much distortion going on. And I probably could add a slight vignette with the feathering going all the way in just to pull the focus in a little bit more. Now I can see here I have a little spot it's probably on the lens or on my uh, sensor or something. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and heal that. That looks fixed. So that's basically it. Obviously the contrast is much worse in the original. I tried to fix it. I tried to put more things in focus. I could probably even go down and add a bit of sharpening to the image, fix up some of the noise as well. Nice and sharp. The vertical lines look pretty good. I could probably crop in a little bit more to center it better. Maybe crop the bottom a little bit more. And overall, I think I'm pretty happy with this. So then basically I just keep going one by one trying to find little issues like the spot on the lens, the framing, the white balance, making sure that things are not too dark, not too bright, and then just playing around with the color and making things look appealing, making sure that things pop, and that's pretty much it. So keep in mind the edits that you're doing and make sure that they're appealing and they're not just for the sake of edits. Sometimes you don't even need to worry about all of the tabs that are in Lightroom. You can just focus on even just the basic tabs sometimes and end up with a result that's much, much better than the original. So while sometimes you might be used to going through each and every single slider in Lightroom and making little changes, you may not have to do that. You could probably just get away with some simple edits in the basic tab and still end up with a much better looking photo than before. So that's that. Obviously, this is a subjective video because not everyone's gonna do the exact same edits that I did. Uh, ultimately, it is your photos that you're gonna be selling, so you can do whatever you want for your own photos. But I wanted to make this video for those who may feel a little bit lost in the process in, at the step that they're at here, uh, so that hopefully that they can move on to the next step of actually uploading the photos. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that this series has been helpful for you. Uh, if you liked it, drop a like, and if you loved it, drop a subscribe. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.